most of my clients, uh, to be quite honest, you know, they, they don't have the financial means to uh, pay for the training. But again, it's, it's not set up for me to make money. I, I just charge enough so that I can pay for the space that I'm using, the weight room space and the indoor uh, artificial turf that, that we utilize. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, well, I mean, if you wouldn't mind, uh, like I said, I'm I'm from the Pittsburgh area, so I know some of our fans of the Bayou Blitz uh, live around me, or, and I know some people, a lot of people that live out in uh, Ohio, maybe towards Youngstown. Uh, so if they're willing to make the trip, uh, if you don't mind, tell them how they can get in touch with you or uh, sign up for the programs. Well, they can reach me uh, one of two ways. They can call me directly at 216-288. Two two four six, or they can even email me for more information at Max Stevens at sbcglobal dot net. That's M A C S T E P H E N S at sbcglobal dot net. Thank you very much, and I will definitely pass the word around here. Uh, I don't know if you hear my little guy in the background. He's got quite a few years before he gets up to that age, but uh, if you're still doing. If you're still doing it at the at the high school level by that point, I'm definitely going to seek you out. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, in fact, I'm pretty excited about the upcoming weekend. Uh, we're taking uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 guys. Uh, we're going to take them down to Columbus to Ohio State's camp where they uh, will go through camp in front of 80 to 90 uh, colleges from all over the country. And then the following day, we go down to Cincinnati, where Lyndon graduated from, and we'll participate in their camp. And there, you know, that's an opportunity for them to perform in front of another thirty to forty colleges and possibly uh, earn a scholarship. So, uh, wow. got a bus- busy weekend ahead of me as well. No doubt, but like you said, very exciting and personally rewarding. No, no question about that. Oh, absolutely! It's all about. It's all about changing lives and giving kids an opportunity uh, that fortunately I got as a young kid. You know, I I was fortunate coming coming from a two parent household, but you know I also had a, a a number of coaches along the way, starting at eight years old, that that always poured into me and and and, and uh, helped build me up as a young man. And without those coaches, I'm I'm pretty certain I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Wow. Now, obviously, uh, you played in a different era of football as far as the way the game was played, the way it was certainly taught. Uh, did, do you find yourself coaching and teaching the game a little bit differently than the way your coaches handled you growing up? Oh, absolutely. I've had to adjust uh, the way I coach. But, you know, when I first got into coaching, the one thing that I always uh, – said to myself is that I would coach uh, these young men the way I, I wanted to be coached as, as, a, as a, a young person. Uh, but, you know, obviously the game is changing and there's just generational differences. And mm-hmm. and I feel uh, these young men and even some young ladies that play have more distractions than what I had, uh, you know, when I was growing up. And, uh, you know, even even with my son, Lyndon, and, you know, he has a twin brother, Colin, when they were playing sports through through uh, middle school and high school, it was definitely a lot different. Um, and, and I, you know, I coach them in various sports. And, you know, with, with this current generation, there's a different way to communicate. And, and you know, even, even on the high school level, one thing I've learned is that uh, – uh, a lot of my kids, they communicate through social media more so mm-hmm. than, than a, say, a phone call. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if I have to change practice or, or make an announcement, uh, typically uh, that's done through social media. So, you know, just little things like that are a lot more different than, than uh, uh, how it was when I was growing up, obviously. No question. Uh, did you find yourself coaching your own kids a little bit harder, uh, or maybe you found yourself a little bit harder on them uh, when you, as opposed to when you coached anybody else? Has that been a challenge for you? Well, that's a, a, a very good question. So, uh, you know, I have twin boys, and Colin and London are, although they're twins, they're complete opposites. 
So when it came to sports, I was always pretty tough on Lyndon um, because Lyndon always expressed um, wanting to play at a high level in, in whatever sport he was in, whether it was basketball, football, or, or running track. So he wanted to be pushed. And, um, you know, he would challenge me. You know, he would want to put in extra work and, and, you know, just do whatever it took to get better. Whereas Colin, you know, Colin always wanted to just play for fun and, and just uh, was more in tune with the social aspect of being out there with some of his friends and buddies. And, and that was fine. Um, you know, a lot of people have asked me over the years, well, how come you didn't push Colin towards football? And I always, you know, I always say Colin never had a love for football. And I think, in fact, uh, Colin may have played flag football one or two years, and that was it. Whereas Lyndon, I mean, he's played some form of football, probably going back to eight years old, whether it's flag and then eventually moving into tackle. So, you know, with Lyndon, it was, uh, you know, it, it, it was tough at times because, you know, uh, you know, as a, as a as a coach, I'm trying to push him, but I all, I'm also trying to to be that dad. And we, you know, we over the years we've had some some tense moments, but um, you know, in the end, uh, I think it helped him, you know, get to the level that he was uh, uh, trying to get to. Uh, very well put. Uh, and gentlemen, if you'll permit me a moment for a personal shout out, as uh, as you may know. Uh, as a lot of the listeners know, uh, I have three beautiful children of my own. Uh, well, today, June 13th, uh, my youngest daughter, my middle child, Isabella, is officially a teenager. Uh, she turns 13 today. Uh, I talked to her a little bit earlier and get to, uh, uh, I know she's hanging out with her mom tonight, but if she's tuning in, happy birthday again, Isabella. And dad loves you and the Bayou Bliss loves you. <laughs> happy birthday to her. Yeah, thank you. Um, hey, Mac, you came out of Minnesota, uh, University of Minnesota, as an undrafted free agent yourself, right? That is correct. Okay, so uh, so you obviously know a little bit about you know what uh, what Lyndon needs to go through to make the team uh, as as an undrafted free agent. Uh, but tell us some of the things that were going through your own mind as a player as you entered your first NFL camp and what that first camp was like. Well, you know, it was interesting. Um, first of all, I started out with the New England Patriots uh, as as a uh, undrafted free agent, and I went through many camps and, and training camp. Had an awesome training camp. I was actually running, uh, taking first and second team reps um, at the time. Uh, Andre Andre Tippett, who's a Hall of Fame outside linebacker for the Patriots. He wasn't participating in training camp, so I was fortunate to get get you know all of his reps along with second team reps. So I felt pretty confident I was going to make the team and had an awesome pre, uh, three preseason games. And um, on that very last cut, um, you know, I got the dreaded knock on my hotel door and um, I had to go speak with the general manager and was told I was being released. And uh, I tell you, I, you know, I cried like a baby because um, I had been talking about playing in the NFL since I was four years old to my mom. And, um, you know, four days later, I was picked up by the New York Jets and I uh, was fortunate to play for uh, Pete Carroll, who was the defensive coordinator at the time. And my linebacker coach was a guy by the name of Monty Kiffin. Uh, and those two guys are, are infamous for – really helping to create the Tampa 2 defense that, that a lot of teams run nowadays. But um, then I went to the Jets. It was a great experience with the Jets. I was on practice squad for a few weeks, but, you know, it was a young team. I had an opportunity to compete uh, for a position, and I got activated. And, um, you know, at times it was an overwhelming experience because I was just kind of out there on my own, um, I, I didn't get any advice for, or no one really could give me the, the, the type of advice that I was seeking. And, um, but I was able to get through that rookie year and I enjoyed every second of it. I was practice hard every day and, 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 you know, um, 
tried to get everything out of that experience that I could. So when you bring it forward to today and in, in Lyndon's situation, because he's in a very similar situation, you know, it's nice to be able to share some of the wisdom that I have of, of going through camp and being a rookie and, 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 and understanding what the expectations are and, you know, just emphasizing to him that, that, you know, you know, he's got to study that playbook like it's a Bible because from a physical standpoint, you know, I told Lyndon going in, you know, he's going to be one of the faster guys in his position. He'll be one of the stronger guys. Uh, he'll be one of the bigger cornerbacks. But the difference between him and those veteran players is, is what takes place between your ears. And and uh, those guys have experience and they, and they have their playbook down and, and – so that you know, that's going to be the the you know the biggest part for him. But you know, from from everything that I can tell so far, he's been doing a pretty decent job. Good, good, yeah, and I I completely agree with you. Uh, I, I watched a lot of his games at Cincinnati. Uh, was always kind of a kind of a fan of the Bearcats and loved his style of play. So there's zero question that he has the physical capability to match up with pretty much anybody that he lines up across from. Uh, and I, I love his speed. Uh, you're, you're talking to a track guy, so that's obviously the first thing that catches my eye. Um, but uh, what were your feelings when Lyndon told you, hey, the New Orleans Saints just signed me? Well, you know, we were uh, in his living room on, uh, at, at, in, at his apartment in Cincinnati at the time. And, uh, you know, there were a couple of teams calling. But I, I was uh, very, very excited about the Saints um, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, it was almost like I had a premonition going back to when he was, when they played Tulane uh, when, uh, when he was in college. And, um, you know, we had talked about, wow, wouldn't it be crazy if, if uh, London could end up with the Saints because, you know, I, I'm, I'm a – jazz lover i love that type of food i just love the atmosphere down there and, and lo and behold uh, he got the opportunity but i think i was excited more so because you know he had taken a uh, a uh, pre-draft visit maybe two weeks prior to the draft down there um on his pro day um i know one of the uh, regional scouts was at cincinnati and I believe one of the one of the uh, uh, defensive back coaches, I believe the safety coach was there, and they put him through drills. So I knew they had do, did their due diligence and, and really knew what type of player that they were getting with him. And um, and obviously they had, they had expressed some strong interest. And you know, even though he didn't get drafted, um, it ended up being, in my opinion, the ideal situation for him. Yeah, and I'm like you. I mean, he is stepping into a very crowded secondary room uh, as far as talent goes. Uh, but you, you have to love the experience of the Saints coaching staff, uh, not only the coordinator, Dennis Allen, uh, but the line coach, Ryan Nielsen. Uh, Kyle and I talk about him a lot uh, on the show here. The linebackers coach, Mike Nolan, has you know, tons of experience. And uh, Aaron Glenn, the secondary coach, uh, probably a uh, – very soon to be the next NFL head coach. Uh, but Lyndon was talking about Coach Glenn in particular when we had him on before, uh, about him being very hands-on and uh, loving an aggressive style of play from his defensive backs, which fits right into Lyndon's wheelhouse and his own style of play. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Uh, Lyndon, um, you know, I think if he can uh, – you know, get an opportunity to play some press coverage and just really uh, utilize his physicality as a, as a cornerback. Um, I, I think, you know, you're going to get a pretty dynamic player. Um, and on top of that, you know, Lyndon, you know, he's always been the, the, the ultra competitor, you know, going back to even when he was a little kid, he was just always out for blood. Um, and I think, you know, on the, on the NFL level, that's what you need. You need a guy that's, going to step in and compete, not afraid. Um, you know, he he doesn't get nervous. He's going to line up against whoever's on the other side of the ball and, and give his give his best shot. And uh, especially at the position that he plays, you know, you, you got to have that attitude. you got to have a little swagger about you, and, and that's one thing he possesses. 
No question. And as a cornerback too, like you uh, like you alluded to, you better have a short memory because they're coming right back at you the next play. Absolutely, especially as a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. No doubt. Uh, now, Matt, your own your own playing career was cut prematurely short uh, due to a back injury, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Yes, I actually uh, broke my fifth vertebrae uh, my senior year of college, and uh, then I re-aggravated that injury about two years later. Once I was uh, when I was with the Vikings, and um, but I went ahead and, and played in the CFL a little bit with the Toronto Argonauts. Came back to the Cleveland area, and um, Rick Spillman, who was uh, at the time director of uh, player personnel with uh, the Detroit Lions, um, they had put me through a workout with the Lions, offered me a contract, and, um, you know, it just got to a point where I had to make a decision, and it just didn't make sense uh, because if I, you know, broke that same vertebrae again, um, you know, I, I, you're talking paralysis possibly. Um and then I was also having some other issues. Uh, you know, I was hit by a car when I was 11 and a half years old, and, and my left foot, I've had 14 different operations on that foot. So through all of my uh, playing years, I've played with a foot that's partially numb, and uh, I would always have to get it taped a special way and get a metal plate taped in my shoe uh, just so that I could play through high school, college, and even professionally. So it just got to the point where, um, you know, I just couldn't subject my body uh, to, to that punishment anymore. Wow. Uh, I, I, like I said, I knew about the back injury. I had no idea about the foot injury. Uh, it's, as as we know, uh, we we all think we're invincible, especially when we're younger. Was it how how tough of a decision was it for you to finally make that call? You know what? I'm going to walk away from the game. Well, it was probably one of the tougher decisions I've made in my life. You know, I, I just turned 50 years old this year, and there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't think about playing still. <laughs> Um, and, you know, I try to stay close to the game through coaching, but, you know, sometimes my high school players, they think I'm crazy because I'll do certain drills with those guys with, with no pads on just, just cause I just need to, you know, get a feel for the game every now and then. But, uh, yeah, it was a tough, tough, uh, decision. I mean, I, I started playing organized football at age eight and then, you know, all of a sudden for it to just come to a stop, that, that was that was very difficult. Given given the fact that you had such a serious injury on the football field, uh, when, when Colin and Lyndon were getting old enough to start playing organized sports and they made the decision to play football, uh, did the fact that you had gotten hurt so badly on, on the field and playing the game, did that give you a little bit extra – uh, fear or trepidation uh, when when your boys decided to, to tell you, hey, Dad, I want to play football? You know, it was always a concern, and, and I mean, it's still a concern every time I watch Lyndon play, but you know, with that being said, um, you know, I, I believe in, you know, when, it, when, when you prepare your body the right way and, and when you know proper technique and fundamentals, uh, that helps lessen the, the, the opportunity for, for injury. Um, but then again, I, you know, I think about my situation at 11 and a half years old, I was, you know, um, I got hit by a car just, you know, walking down the street and, um, you know, that almost stopped me from walking altogether because, uh, at that time there was talk of, uh, amputating my, my left, left foot. So, you know, at the same time, I, I, you know, I just try to have the approach of, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a man of prayer and, and, uh, I believe in something higher than myself and, and I pray, pray over my sons and just trust that, you know, they'll be safe. And, and, and you know, I, I hope for the best. Um, you know, I know, you know, Lyndon, especially at the level that he's playing at now, you know, you're going to get mixed up and, and possibly get injured, but, <coughs> 
you know, the one thing I've always stressed to him is is uh, making sure he gets proper treatment or if he gets mixed up, make sure he sees a trainer. Mm -hmm. Because when I was 22, 23 years old, I really did feel like I was Superman. Um, <laughs> I, I just wouldn't go see a trainer. I would just, you know, bite my teeth and grit through whatever injury and, and thought, you know, I'll be fine. And then as I got older, <laughs> it started to catch up to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I do believe that Lyndon has joined us. Lyndon, are you with us? Yeah, I'm in here. Oh, welcome. Welcome, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back as our first repeat guest of the Bayou Blitz, uh, Saints cornerback Lyndon Stevens. Uh, how are you tonight, Lyndon? I'm doing good. Just relaxing. <laughs> how about you? Oh, we're hanging in there, hanging in there. Uh, just yeah, think, thinking about you. Uh, if your ears were burning, a lot of the conversation has been about you and uh, what's going on down there with uh, with your with your team and with mini camp. Uh, so tell us some of the things that they've been putting you guys through early in camp. Oh, really? Um, today was our second day of mini camp, and um, we really just been going over the plays and just making sure everything's in before training camp. Before. Uh, before we officially get in training camp. But for the most part, everything's been good. I've been getting a lot of reps. Um, I've been rotating with the twos, some days the threes. But really one of the main things is just um, really just learning everything as quick as possible. So come training camp, you know, I'm out there playing fast and not thinking. So that's just been one of, been one of the main things that's been going on. But uh, for the most part, everything's been good. Um, I've been learning. <laughs> Sorry, that's my own little man in the background uh, yelling and saying hello to you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, when we when we had you on before, Lyndon, you know, we were talking about, and it was still very early in the process, uh, but we were talking about both the physical and uh, and mental changes to the game uh, adjustments between college and pros. Uh, which are you finding is moving a little bit faster for you, the physical aspect or the mental aspect? I say definitely the physical, just because I feel like I'm already physically gifted, just as much as the other guys. You know, I can run with everybody and pretty much do everything I want to do on the field. But with the mental aspect, I think it's just um, you're competing against you know a number of guys that are just as good as you, and you have to be consistent every day. You have to perform. You have to play fast. You have to um, eliminate your mistakes. You can't have a lot of mistakes. You know, it's not like college where you can get, just keep getting second chances. So I think that's one of the main parts is just coming in every day, staying focused, doing everything you're supposed to do, just doing all the little things right on and off the field. Um, I'm, even in college, you know, I, I watch film, but here you really have to pay attention to detail and you know pretty much everybody's position because uh, my, my coach, he believes in, understanding the entire defense. In college, I didn't put a lot of emphasis on that. I mainly just worried about what I was doing sometimes. But now he really wants you to understand football, and it's definitely elevating my game, and and, and it's helping me play at a high level right now. Nice. Now, uh, where where do Coach Glenn and, uh, and Coach Allen, you said you're getting a lot of reps, especially with the twos. Uh, where, where do your coaches have in your lineup the most? Uh, inside, outside, or are they giving you a pretty even mix? Outside, he likes he likes to like to run. I mean, he, pretty much I've been outside, you know, all practices. Eventually, I think I'll learn nickel eventually, but me and the other rookie corner, we just mainly been outside, making sure we master master that before we move to any other position. But um, he, he, my coach speaks highly of me. He believes in me. He just tells me to keep working. He's pretty hard on me in practice, and I just take take the coaching in, and I learn from the older guys, and I just try to limit my mistakes every day and just keep working hard. And, and, and it can be hard some days. It's definitely difficult sometimes because you're competing against the best. But one of the main things I try to do is just talk to my dad. You know, sometimes you, every day is not a good day, you know, it's the NFL, you know. So I just talk to my dad, and he tells me just keep working. And it, and it can just keep taking the coaching. So, yeah, and like I said, a lot of the conversation uh, you know, was about you. Um, 
Um, but one thing I wanted to ask you, well, a couple things I want to ask you both when I have, uh, you know, now that I have you together, uh, when we were talking about, uh, your dad's back injury that kind of forced, uh, forced the premature end of his career, uh, mm-hmm. and how, how difficult it was, uh, not only for him to walk away, uh, but when you and Colin, as you and Colin were getting older, uh, what kind of feelings were going through his head when you guys told him, uh, hey, you want to play football? Uh, knowing the way your dad got hurt and you know, seeing what the game had physically done to him, uh, did that give you yourself any hesitation uh, about making the decision to play football? I think it definitely did. I had a lot to do with it, but just from my dad's, my dad's experience, I think just – Seeing him go through all that, it definitely makes me just want to embrace every moment because you never know when your time is up. And I and I personally can't imagine not being being able to put gloves on, not being able to put shoulder pads and helmet on, you know, every day. That would be hard and something that I, I pretty much worked my entire life to get here. And I couldn't imagine, you know, not doing what I love each and every day. So I think just from my dad's experience, uh, I think he was so hard on me, and he just wants to see me do well. And he never, ever wanted me to follow in his footsteps. I mean, we've talked about this for a while. He just wanted me, wanted me to live out my dream. It was never about the money or how many years I played. Like he told me, you know, Lyndon, if you, when you make the team and you play for how many years or whatever you're blessed to play for, you're one of the best of the best no matter how many years you played. Just to be able to be at this level is a blessing. So I, I definitely embrace it. I tell him every day like that, I'm happy to be here. You know, sometimes I have hard days, but for the most part, you know, I, I work hard each and every day. And um, I'm always – I stay after after practice sometimes, getting extra help. I put the time in. I mean, I love what I'm doing right now. So and there's nothing I can see myself doing. Very well put. Uh, and I, this question, actually, for both of you gentlemen, uh, Mac, when you were in Minnesota, uh, they had a tight end by the name of Steve Jordan, very talented, very uh, a perennial Pro Bowl tight end. Uh, and as some some of our fans may know, uh, Steve is the father of uh, Saints defensive end, Saints All Pro defensive end Cam Jordan. Uh, now, Kyle, you and I, you know, talk about Cam a lot on this uh, on this show. Uh, we know him to be a playful jokester and you know, especially great with fans and kids. Uh, but on the field you won't find a more intense competitor. Uh, Lyndon, have you, uh, or Mac for that matter, have you talked with Cam uh, at, at all about, uh, you know, the, the father-son thing uh, that we have going on in New Orleans at all? I, I have not. I have not talked with uh, Steve since, uh, actually since I left the Vikings. Uh, I mean, we used to, used to go, go against each other in practice because obviously he was a, a, a tight end and I was uh, playing outside backer and inside backer for the Vikings. But, yeah, it's, since 1991, I haven't talked to him, Steve. Had a little bit of technical difficulty. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Okay, I apologize. Uh, sometimes when we get storms up this way, it messes, uh, messes up with my, con- my contacts. Uh, so I, I apologize. Um, Lyndon, uh, you talked about how, uh, how you kind of rely on some of the older players, uh, the players that have been there and some of their experiences. Uh, but we know that you're, you're, you're in with an extremely young defense and they seem to be really close, especially the secondary players. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there one or you know, a couple players that you've been shadowing or that have kind of taken you under their wing? One player, my dad used to coach, Jaron Elliott at Glenville, mm-hmm. and he helps me throughout the process a lot. I'm always asking questions or asking, well, what should I do? How do I handle this? And he's always giving me good advice. My dad coached him at Glenville for a number of years. Um, there's sometimes I ask Ken Crawley, um, what should I do? You know, how do I do this? And he's always helped me. They're always uh, willing to help me and give me advice. But, um, you know, guys like that, I'm, I've, I've, I always watch them because I mean, they play in the game. They know what it feels like. So at the end of the day, I just try to be a sponge and, 
I take everything they say in, and I just definitely try to shadow everything they do. So when my time is up, I know what to do, and, and try to, or even try to do it better. So, but one of the main guys definitely been J. Ron Elliott. He definitely been helping me out a lot, and, and just helping me stay positive throughout the whole process. And he just he just reminds me daily: don't worry about where you're at. Just keep working hard, and everything will take care of itself. Oh, nice, Mac. Did uh, did you when Lyndon was younger, especially? Did you and Lyndon have much opportunity to watch football film together, uh, or when when you guys were off the football field? Uh, yeah, did you just touch on a couple things and then just yeah it settle into a, a more of a traditional father son relationship? It was uh, more of a traditional father son relationship. Um, you know especially when it came to football, I always tried when, like when he was in high school, I coached at the high school that Lyndon attended. So I always tried to let other people coach him because, um, you know, he and I, we, I mean, we would talk, but, you know, I wouldn't necessarily, we wouldn't come home and, and watch, you know, that Friday night's game uh, with each other, um, you know, because I, I did want him, to get a little mental break, and, and I just felt it was important to just sometimes just be a father and not a father coach. And Lyndon, before you came on, uh, Max said that he was extremely easy on you guys as a coach and let you get away with anything you want. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Yeah. What, uh, what, <laughs> what What was Dad like as a coach? I mean, I you know I asked him. Uh, obviously, but, uh, yeah, did you feel, and obviously, you know, it, it, when you're younger, uh, a lot of us get through the period of time where we think our dad's picking on us, uh, or, you know, being a little bit rougher on us and, you know, than they are our friends or whatever the case may be. Uh, but you guys, you guys had a relationship on a different level than a lot of father sons do. Uh, you know, so t- talk to us a little bit about how, how dad was as a coach. Uh, I definitely, we had some good moments. There was, there was some times where we went our separate ways, but back then I always thought he was picking on me. He was real hard. He was real hard on me. And back then I really didn't understand why. I'm like, Dad, like, do you not want me to play in my game? Or, you know, he'll kick me out of my game sometimes if I had a bad attitude or if I wasn't doing something right or if I wasn't, you know, running hard enough. Or, And back then, you know, eight, ten years old, you really don't understand why, you know, your dad is doing that. Even though sometimes you need to be disciplined, but sometimes I don't understand why it was so hard. But when I look at it now, I just think, I mean, my dad was really the only one that believed that I would get to this level. I mean, really the only person. Because back then when I, when I would ever bring up NFL, you know, everybody would laugh. But he would always tell me one day I'll get to this level no matter what what route I take, I'll get here someday. And um, I always believed it. And now at 23 years old, I see why he was hard, so hard on me. You know, it's funny. It took me 23 years to realize why he was so hard. <laughs> but it took me getting into an NFL meeting, getting into an NFL practice, and actually going into NFL conditioning. Because some of the things he said, I'm like, whatever, Dad. He's just talking. But I'm like, oh, wow, he was everything he said was pretty much right. But back then, I really didn't understand, you know, everything he was trying to do. And I think he wasn't trying to, like I said, my dad never wanted me to follow his footsteps. He just seen, you know, I always would work hard and put the the time in to get where I'm at now. And he see, he seen how bad I wanted it. So he, he always told me, if you do this, you do that, you do this, you do this, you'll get there. And, um you know, eventually when I when I started doing everything he told me, everything started working out for itself. I got focused, and you know now I appreciate everything he's done. Now, you know, definitely without him giving me that advice or um, helping me out throughout those years, I, 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 I'm positive I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I'm definitely thankful for that, and I don't regret him doing any any of that. Um, even though sometimes I thought he was really hard on me, but at the end of the day, it got me where I'm at today, so I'm very appreciative of it. Uh, that's, that's outstanding. And wait, my friend, when you get older, your dad's going to get even smarter. Uh, I'm pretty convinced that my own dad is the smartest guy in the universe right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and 
you just like I, you just like we told you when we had you on before, Lyndon. I certainly don't want you to uh, mention anything or talk about anything uh, either the coaches don't want to get outside of those locker rooms. Uh, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of film that they have you guys watching? Are they breaking down your own practices? Uh, or are you already starting to break down some of your 2018 opponents that are, that are on your schedule? Definitely, um, with our practices and date, definitely break down what you do. Like, he focused on everybody. He doesn't just focus on one particular player. If you're doing something wrong, he calls it out. But we definitely uh, watch some film of other teams and just in their previous games. But for the most part, our, we, we mostly just watch our practices and, and just go over our schemes that we're um, doing now. But we really haven't got into, you know, watching film with other teams yet for net, for the season. But we have watched, you know, their games from last year and went over things and just tried to build on what they've already done. Oh, cool. So let me ask you this. Do you hate the Atlanta Falcons yet? No, I, I personally don't. Don't hate it, but I think I'll have to hate them since, you know, the Saints don't like them, so. <laughs> I think I'll have to. <laughs> it, it will be there, sir. It will be there. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you a question, uh, father and son. Um, Mac, I know you've been through it. You've seen your son to this day uh, grow into be a fine young man. Um, is there any anything that you can share with him right now for other fathers and sons who are listening uh, to your son that uh, could be uh, uh, some words of wisdom that you possibly haven't uh, shared with him yet? Yeah, well, you know, the one thing is, um, and, and, you know, I, Lyndon and I had this conversation last night, but, you know, um, there's going to be some days where it's going to be tough and you know you're going to have to mentally toughen up and just rely on all the training and and be confident and just be that fearless athlete that that he's been his entire life um you know i i'm i'm a, a big into motivation and inspiration and uh, earlier today, I was listening to uh, one of the top motivational speakers in the country, Inky Johnson, and he talked about when we go through adversity, that's when it shows who we really are. And, you know, so there's going to be times when when, uh, when Lenny is in camp, mini camp, or even training camp, and, you know, you just don't have the day that they that you know you were hoping to have but then your your true self comes through do you buckle down and say you know what i'm going to come back tomorrow and i'm going to give those receivers hell or am i just going to give up on myself and um you know i pretty much know what direction Lyndon is going to go but you know that's just something that he's got to put in the back of his mind and, and just know that uh, there's going to be some times when you, when you got to fight through adversity, and that's just, you know, whether it's a, a little NFL training camp uh, or in the bigger picture life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because life is going to throw you more adversity than what any NFL training camp will, will throw you. So, um, you know, ultimately, um, you know, he'll be okay because, uh, you know, that, that's what he's been taught his whole life. Awesome. Awesome stuff. And, Lyndon, yeah, awesome. anything for your father being uh, going into Father's Day weekend, uh, anything that you can just share uh, openly uh, to for our listeners to, to hear about your father or any anything that you like to praise upon him? Because, you know, I, I'm getting sick and tired of these guys uh, <laughs> be on there. Uh, hey, Mama, hey, Mama, us pops, we need to get some love, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like I said, my dad, he definitely got me where I'm at today. Like, I've always appreciated him. You know, we've definitely been at it a lot of times growing up. 
And, you know, there was just a lot of things I didn't, like I said, I didn't understand. But I think that's one thing a lot of kids fail to realize that, you know, especially, I know with my dad, I never, he was never, he never did anything trying to put me down or, or he, he never was a dad trying to live through me. He just always knew what I wanted and how hard and how passionate I was. And he, and he did everything possible for, for me to go Division One and to get to the next level, you know, considering, you know, my grades weren't high enough in high school and I was either going to walk on, but he ended up, you know, sacrificing some things for me so I can go to prep school, so I can live out my dream. And I think, you know, it's, there's not a lot of dads that, that are like that, that are willing to make that sacrifice. And I, that's one thing why I go so hard every day. And no matter how difficult things can be, when I think of, you know, that situation, that particular situation, when, from when I went to Fort Union, the NFL is really, um, it's not that hard for me. Like everything that I'm going through is difficult, but it's never that hard where, you know, I can't go anymore. I'm always, I'm always self-motivated just from what I've been through. Everything that got me here. It's made me who I am today, and I, like I said, my like my my dad's one of probably the only person in my life really that I can name that just truly and genuinely believed in me. So not, and he's never tried to live through me or you know want me to play football just because he did. Like my brother quit football when I think I was like ten, and I only think my dad cared. You know, a lot of people, oh, your dad's Max Stevens. Like, did your brother play? I'm like, nah, my brother just he just goes to school, and I still get that to this day. Oh, did your brother play football? <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, he doesn't. My, my dad was never the type to make my brother play a sport, make me play a sport. When I played baseball, volleyball, did all types of sports, soccer. He always was just the type of dad that let us do what we wanted to do and whatever made us happy. And I just was passionate about I, – I was gifted. I knew I was gifted at a certain age, and I was – at a young age, I was always really passionate. I, mean, I did some crazy things that a lot of kids nowadays I don't think would do. <laughs> I'm just running at night, you know, just constantly working out. Um, and like I said, I think I got that mentality from my dad. He definitely installed that in me at a at a young age and instilled that in me, and I appreciate that. And you know, like I said, without him, I'm not where I'm at today. So that's how I look at it. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. I love Definitely. to hear it. Awesome. Definitely. Brendan, you're going to have a little bit of time off, uh, you know, between the time that mini camp wraps up and uh, when you guys have to report for training camp. Uh, are you going to have the opportunity to come home? Uh, are you going to stick around New Orleans for some extra work? Have you decided yet? Yeah, I'm going home for three and a half weeks. So I'll just be at home training. And get my body right, get mentally and physically prepared for when I come back. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be at home for, you know, a couple weeks. And the whole time I'll just really be training for uh, training camp. Cool. Uh, are, uh, are your coaches or any of the veteran players uh, giving, giving you guys any tips or uh, instructions or advice on what to do with your time, you know, suggestions on what to do with your time off before you report back? Uh, not really. Uh, like I said, some of the some of the veterans they don't really talk to rookies that much. I mean, I understand it's a business, so yeah, really, I don't really talk to the. I mean, there's some guys that I talk to, but especially in our group, it's a real competitive atmosphere. You know, especially at this time, you know, guys aren't really. You can tell it's really getting competitive. Things are really about to start going, but for the most part, you know, rookies are on their own. Like you have to figure things out on your own. There's really not much talking with 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 veterans. Um, only talking I have with veterans is, hey, rookie, bring me some snacks tomorrow. They'll be like, bring me some snacks in the morning or get my helmet. <laughs> That's really the only and and I'm and I'm fine with that because I'm competitive too and I, and I'm willing to compete against those guys. So I don't take it personal. You know, it's a business, so I go in there each and every day, focusing just as hungry as they are. So. Um, I understand it's a business. Like I said, veterans don't talk to rookies at all like you think. They really don't, unless you come across just an older guy that's just willing to help you out. But for the most part, you're in there by yourself. You stay quiet, you handle your business, and you get out of there, come back next day ready to work. Yeah, nice. Now, yeah, how about you, Mac? When uh, when Lyndon has some time off and he's going to swing home, 
Uh, Lord knows you're going to be crazy busy preparing for your own team uh, and everything you've got going on with them too. Uh, but are you going to have any any instructions or uh, pieces of advice uh, to Lyndon on how to handle his time off before he reports back? Well, I'm sure, you know, well, first of all, we're just going to spend some quality time together. Um, you know, I'm extremely, extremely close to Lyndon. Um, you know, we'll, he'll, he'll come train with me and train with, uh, the guy that I hired that, that, um, uh, helps me put, put young men through workouts. But, you know, I just kind of want, want to give him a little mental rest and I'll leave him alone about the football part of it unless he wants to, uh, bring it up. But I, you know, for me, it's just spend some, some quality father son time together and then, uh, you know, just get him ready as much as possible uh, for, for training camp. Nice. Nice. Now, I, I'm going to give both of you guys a chance to never, ever, ever get in trouble for the, you know, for whatever statement you're about to make to the other one, because uh, we're going to, we're going to play a pretend game here. Uh, and I'll give you both of you an opportunity. Uh, but Mac, we'll go with you first. We're going to shift okay. you out of dad mode. Uh, we'll shift you out of dad mode and shift you over into Coach Stevens mode. So you're a defensive coordinator of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, your team just signed this really talented defensive back from Cincinnati named Lyndon. Uh, you've watched him for a couple of years. You've gotten to know him, gotten to know his emotional makeup. So how are you going to use him, and what are you going to tell your, uh, your new defensive back uh, when he steps onto your facility? Well, first of all, I'm going to make him uh, compete, and he's just got to understand from day one that uh, he's got to learn the system. Nothing's going to be handed to him. There's going to be high expectations. I've watched his his college film. From a physical standpoint, I know what he's capable of, but he still has to prove it on a day-in and day-out basis. But if he can do the things that I've seen on film and just based on uh, – uh, some of our background research, I'm pretty confident that uh, he should be able to contribute uh, this year and, and, and definitely play on special teams. Nice. Nice. Uh, how about you, Kyle? Anything anything to add on to that before we uh, give Lyndon his chance? No, uh, good stuff. Uh, well, I would ask this. Uh, Coach, if you see that Lyndon is slacking at any time <laughs> out on the practice <laughs> field, what do you tell this young man? <laughs> it's not what I tell him. It's what I make him do. <laughs> uh, and, and, and he knows there's consequences and for, for, for slacking. Uh, and, and, you know, and Lyndon, Lyndon would be the first to tell you, even as a – when I'm just being a fan parent, when he was in Cincinnati, it was hard for me to enjoy the games because I was, you know, I was always in coach mode, critiquing every play, um, you know. So, it, you know, it's difficult for me, but but he knows, uh, you know, he's just got to get it get get it done, or else there's consequences. Bottom line. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> now, I'll flip it over to you, Lyndon. Uh, you, you've just been signed by the New Orleans Saints. Uh, you know, you're, you're excited. You've watched this team. Uh, but you've heard that their defensive backs coach, a guy by the name of Coach Stevens, you've heard that he's really hard on rookie defensive backs. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> you, know you, 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 you studied his style for a while. And you've had a chance to talk to him a couple of times. Uh, what are a couple of things that you're going to say to him the first time that you meet him face-to-face? A couple of things I might say to him is, um, also I'm willing to work, do whatever, um, willing to do whatever I do, I do whatever to get on the field. Uh, especially knowing Coach Stevens, I know he's very, very hands-on, uh, very hardcore coach. So I just do whatever, who do whatever demands of me, uh, and I'll just be respectful at all times, and considering his coaching style and. Uh, Really, just soak up everything he says, and just be ready to work every day. Very okay. well put. Very well put. Okay. Um, I'm, you know, gotten to know uh, both of you a little bit over the last couple months. Uh, everything that each of you just said fits exactly along style with your personality. I could see why you guys get along so well. Um, Kyle, anything to add on to uh, what Lyndon said to uh, to Coach? 
Well, hey, Coach and Lyndon. Lyndon, when your dad finally comes to the Big Easy to come visit, where are you taking him? Ooh. I might take my dad. Let me see. I've been a couple food spots down here. I don't even know the name, so I just know the food was good. <laughs> <Which one? laughs> and, he's, and he's paying. He's paying? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good, good. Look, man, I just me, wish me and, my, me, me and my dad eat anything. Dog. We'll probably go on Frenchman or uh, French Quarter. And I know some food spots around there. I would take them. Good. Take them around there. Yeah, you got a good, good. You got to get a good oyster pull bar, a shrimp pull bar, or, or something like that when you guys get down there. Um, right. But look, guys, uh, Mac and Lyndon, you. You've been great, and uh, we really do want you guys to come back to the show later on in the season yeah. uh, in any way, shape, or form. If there's anything that you guys are promoting, let us know what we can do on our websites to be able to promote uh, the, the causes that you have or anything that's going on with the high school as well. Um, I think all in all, Lyndon, and we, we told your son this, Mac, the first time he was on the air, you can tell how very polite, how well-spoken he, he is, as well as how thought uh, thoughtful in his approach to to studying the game. And uh, I, I can just see high success and abundant success in his life. So uh, I, I'm just I'm thankful that we had this father-son uh, dialogue between the two of you guys because fathers uh you can see how mac you have made such a great impression and um you've been a model father for your son in his life i applaud you i appreciate it appreciate it yeah definitely guys uh and it's it's been a privilege to get uh getting to know uh, both of you guys uh and really a couple members of your family uh follow colin on social media too uh uh, you know, he, he, he has the same sort of personality. Uh, you guys, you guys are just all extremely nice to talk to, extremely engaging. Uh, it, I, I feel strongly that I could speak for a lot of New Orleans Saints Nation when I say uh, that you know you make great additions to the Houdat family. Uh, thankful to have you, you know, with our Bayou Blitz family. And I echo everything that Kyle is saying. Uh, anytime either one of you want to come on uh, together or separate, or if there's something that you want us to get out there for you, uh, you have, you know, you, both of you have each of our numbers. Uh, you let us know. Uh, but thank you both for coming on tonight. I think we had, I think we put out a really great Father's Day special and uh, hopefully positive messages to everybody listening out there. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Yeah, Lyndon, I know you got to get back to work and uh, hopefully get some rest for the evening uh, before you hit it early tomorrow. Uh, is there anything else you want to add or uh, do you want to tell any of your fans how to follow you or anything like that? Uh, make a follow me on Instagram at Lyndon underscore Stevens underscore. Lyndon. And, my Instagram, and my Twitter is Lyndon Stevens. There, if anybody wants to follow. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and again, you know, thank you, Lyndon, for being on tonight. Uh, you know, get get some rest this evening, and we'll be watching you out on the football field for sure. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, who that? Thank you, who that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How about you, Mac? Is there, you know, you know, tell everybody how to follow you. Uh, you know, especially uh, your you know, your youth football programs and uh, Cleveland Heights football. Uh, you know, get behind them. Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter. You can follow me at Max Stevens, M A C S T E P H E N S. Awesome. Sounds great. And, and guys, don't forget to follow us also, Lyndon and Mac, at Saints News on Twitter and at Saints News on Instagram. Okay? Absolutely. Sure. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate you. And, um, Hey, Lyndon, give him hell, man. I will. Sure. Awesome. Good, good, good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, All right, Mr. Kyle, Rose. we had 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was about to say we had a great show, another great show tonight. Uh, Who that nation? If you guys would like to follow those guys, remember everything that Lyndon and his father said on the air. Uh, you can also listen to this replay. We're going to have that replayed on Saturday night uh, for you guys in Who that nation to listen to Mr. Max Stevens and Lyndon Stevens, our special guest for this Father's Day special. Um, Bob, great show again. Who that uh, nation? Remember, Bob, you can be followed. How? Uh, you can follow me on Facebook at Bob Rose. Uh, I am extremely active, or as active as I can be, in a number of different uh, different Saints forums. Uh, and as a lot of you know, I do write for the Canal Street Chronicles and publish my work through Canal Street Chronicles and the Saints News Network on Facebook, as well as Twitter. Uh, where the work can be followed at Saints News or at Saints CSC is the Canal Street Chronicles website. My own personal Twitter is at Bobby R twenty six thirteen. Uh, and you know, like Kyle said, uh, we're going to post a replay of tonight's terrific show. Uh, I'm speechless. I mean, you know, both Mac and Lyndon are such extremely impressive individuals. Uh, not only easy guys to root for, uh, you know, but the New Orleans New Orleans Saints. Uh, football team is lucky to have you know these two members into uh, into our family. So I was really impressed with those two tonight. Definitely, definitely. And guys, Saints fans and who dads from all over the world, don't forget you can follow the Saints News Radio Network on the air at Saints News or go to www.saintsnews.net to follow us 24-7 on the web. Or you can also check out Barry Hurst's original articles he's been at training camp and he had some some really great notes from and takeaways from the training camp at www.saintsnewsnetwork.com this is kyle t mosley with mr bob rose of the bayou blitz bob man you guys hang in there and tell my little man give him give him a hug for me and say uncle kyle is uh rooting for you too <laughs> I will. I will definitely do so. And uh, happy early Father's Day to you as and well, Kyle. To you. To you. Uh, and uh, to, of course, my dad, uh, Mr. Bob Rose Sr. And to my fiance's father, Mr. Chris Davenport, if you're tuning in. Happy Father's Day to all you guys and to everybody out there. And thank you again for having us, uh, having the Bayou Blitz in your home on Wednesday nights. Yeah, uh, guys and moms out there, fathers are people too. So give them some love. We don't, we don't need no socks. We don't need no uh, ugly sweaters, no ugly ties. Get us something good, please. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great evening. I'm not greedy like Kyle. I don't, I don't need <laughs> gifts. I have, uh, I have uh, my Brianna, my Isabella, and my, uh, and my little Will. No, uh, those no, are my, those no, are mine. no. Uh, so I don't need ties or socks. No, Bob. I'm going to talk to Lauren and make sure she gets you something good, okay? <laughs> All right, buddy. You guys have a great weekend and uh, Father's Day uh, to everyone. Love y'all. Who that nation? Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Lyndon. Peace. We out. <laughs>